Hello, welcome back to the low power VLSA lecture. Uh, today we will start with uh, chapter 3. In this lecture, um, we will discuss about introduction to the sources of power dissipation. Third chapter title is sources of power dissipation and uh, introduction will be given in this lecture. Now, the power dissipation may be specified in two ways. Chapter title is sources of power dissipation. Now, here we are talking about the same sources of power dissipation. Power dissipation may be specified in two ways. One is maximum power dissipation. Other one is average power dissipation. As these two names uh, differ and uh, the names itself is uh, suggesting maximum power dissipation means the instantaneous power that is being consumed right now consider uh, for example uh, half of a sine wave half wave of a sine that is at 90 degrees what will be the sine wave situation it is at the peak right so that that's how so the maximum power dissipation is the instantaneous power dissipation that occurs when the circuit draws maximum power when the circuit draws maximum power that is called as maximum power dissipation uh, coming to the average power dissipation both are completely different if the maximum if the peak power is drawn all the times then the average power dissipation will be high because the average power dissipation is defined as the power uh, dissipated over a period of time right so when a peak power is dissipated all the times what will be the average average will go high now if sometimes high sometimes low sometimes very less uh, power consumption is happening then the average power will be moderate so for the battery operated devices like portable devices like laptops, mobiles and all, this average power dissipation is concentrated much. It should be less. If this is not less, the power, the battery will drain very soon, which is not suitable for the portable devices. So uh, there, is, there are two different kinds of things that we have to understand at this point of time. Power consumption is different, energy consumption is different. The curve consider uh, a curve. I will try to draw. If this is time and this is power y axis this is the maximum power that is consumed and the energy is area under this curve gives you power so if you integrate this uh, curve p of t from 0 to t then the integral gives you then that integral gives you energy energy of the signal so power is different and energy is different energy is area under the curve so that is the reason why all our batteries and battery operated devices have the batteries rated as milliamp hours 6000 milliamp hours 5000 milliamp hours that is for portable devices the power consumption is treated as energy consumption and it is rated in milliamp hours because we always uh, have bothering about the energy consumption not the power all, all the times so with this uh, with this uh, introduction let us jump into these uh, types of power dissipation types of power dissipation is of two types one is static power dissipation and the another one is dynamic power dissipation what is static power dissipation if the inputs and outputs are not changing then it is called as static power dissipation. 
or the other time the other way of representing this is both pull up and pull down devices are simultaneously on for a very low uh, output levels causing direct current flow both devices pull up and pull down devices are on during some particular time that means no change but both the devices are on that time the power is consumed is called as static power dissipation whereas the dynamic power dissipation is due to the changing levels of input and output is called as dynamic power dissipation when the circuit is active and the circuit is working inputs and outputs keeps changing whenever load capacitor charges and discharges slowly it incurs power dissipation whenever a input signal or the output signal changes its level the the time required to change its level will be very short the power consumed during that short period the period which takes for a signal from from shifting from 0 to 1 going up that short time whatever the power consumed that is called as dynamic power dissipation the mechanisms see here at this point i want to uh, wanted to tell one thing that if you want to reduce the power consumption you have to change the fa- design of your system to reduce the energy you can change for example if your clock speed is 1 gigahertz and it is consuming some x amount of energy you can reduce the energy consumption by making the clock frequency half if you make the clock frequency half your energy consumed will be half at the same time the number of operations that take place for every second will also be half that means the processor takes 2 seconds of time whereas previously it was 1 second now it will take 2 seconds of time and execute the instruction now what happened the energy consumed has become half time uh, time of execution have doubled now the overall energy consumption for each uh, given set of task is same what has differ here the difference here is the average power consumption has gone down half of the energy means half of the power being consumed for each uh, at any point of time what is the advantage means when the average power consumption goes down circuit does not gets heated up very quickly and it is it in it will be protected otherwise circuit may malfunction or may damage it cannot be protected cooling mechanisms fails and the device also fails there is a tendency of device failure also okay come back this uh, mechanisms involved in dynamic power dissipation there are three types of dynamic power di- dissipations may take place one is short circuit power dissipation switching power dissipation and glitching power dissipation short circuit power dissipation occurs when both nmos and pmos networks are on that means consider a cmos inverter whose drain is connected pull up device drain is connected to supply and pull down device uh, source is connected to ground uh, what if both the devices are on if both the devices are on the current supply current flows from the pull up device through pull down device also and reaches the ground this is called as short circuit power dissipation understood and Uh, that main reason for this short circuit power dissipation is slow rise and fall times of inputs if the input is slowly rising for a very short period of time when uh, v in is 0.5 vdd which is equal to vinv if that is equal to vinv uh, that time both the devices will be in uh, saturation then the direct current flows from supply to ground that is 
short circuit power dissipation. Next is switching power dissipation. As the input and output values keeps on changing, the capacitive load at uh, different circuit points are charged and discharged. These chargings and dischargings lead to a power dissipation which is called as switching power dissipation. This is called switching power dissipation because this dissipation is happening because of the switching activity that is taking place because of the change in the input. Okay, now the third type of uh, power dissipation is a glitching power dissipation. This glitch power dissipation happens because of the finite delays in the logic circuits. For example, if one input is directly connected to the third stage, another input has is connected to the first stage which has to pass stage 1 and stage 2 and has to come to the third stage. Consider another input which is connected to the second stage that has to pass only one stage and come to the output. Here in the three inputs, uh, three inputs to the third stage are one is directly connected, another one is through one network th and third one is connected to through Two networks. Now the propagation delay that has happened because of the one network comes fast. First, uh, the first direct input comes first. Second input will be the signal which is coming through the uh, one network. Through one network is coming second, and after some delay, the the signal which is coming through uh, passing through two uh, networks will be coming. Now these three inputs arrive at the third stage at three different times. Now, the, the because of this finite delay, a switching activity takes place, unnecessary switching activity takes place at the output of third stage. This unnecessary, because of this unnecessary switching activity, as just now we have seen, switching power dissipation takes place. That switching power dissipation that has happened because of the finite delay of the logic gates is called as glitching power dissipation. This is, uh, this is the these uh, all these uh, are uh, short circuit switching power and glitching power dissipations are dynamic power dissipations whereas uh, this is the static power dissipation the static power dissipation is because of these leakage currents that are happening seven different kinds of leakage currents may take place in a mass transistor because of these seven kind of uh, uh, continuous current leakages the power is being consumed that power is called as static power dissipation the first one is reverse bias pn junction diode leakage current because consider if this substrate is of p p substrate and definitely these diffusions source and drain will be of n type n type and p type together is a junction pn junction the pn junction this is connected to for example if this this is connected to a positive supply which is n type n type is connected to positive supply and p type is connected to ground which is nothing but reverse bias the every reverse bias of the diode will have some leakage current that current is called as reverse bias pn junction leakage current got my point second one is here i1 and i2 i1 and i2 both currents are reverse bias leakage currents reverse bias the second one is second current is reverse bias pn junction current due to the tunneling of electrons from valence band to the conduction band of the region. Some electrons which are there in the conduction uh, valence band may be attracted to the valence band because of the heat, because of the light, maybe because of the electric field or because of the rupture of the other uh, rupture due to other electrons. All these currents are treated as I2 reverse bias pn junction current due to the tunneling of electrons from conduction band to valence band around. the next one is sub threshold leakage current between the source and drain when the gate voltage is less than the threshold voltage vt less than the whenever the gate voltage is less than vt we consider gate not formed we know that gate will not form before uh, when the gate voltage is less than Vt. Even then, some charge carriers are coming from drain to source. That type in that current is called as subthreshold, less than the threshold, subthreshold, less than the threshold. 
current that is flowing is called as subsidiary leakage current between source and drain. Next is oxide tunneling. See, when the device is scaled down along with the drain size, source size, substrate size, gate size, the thickness of SiO2 or the gate dielectric will also get reduced. Because of the reduced uh, oxide thickness, some charge carriers will tunnel, will forcibly pass through the insulating material because of the high feed. This type of unintended charge carrier flow through the oxide layer is called as oxide tunneling current. The next current is hot carrier, hot current, uh, gate current due to hot carrier uh, injection of electrons. This hot carrier injection is also similar to the tunneling current, but it is because of the, as yeah, just now we have seen, the charge carriers which are changing from valence band to conduction band, uh, these electrons uh, are tunneling. So that type of tunneling is called as the hot carrier injection tunneling. Gate induced drain leakage current. Uh, the drain, see here, if you can see, so, if you can see some part of the drain overlaps the uh, comes under the gate structure because gate is applied with high potential sometimes this gate influences a little current uh, induction in the drain that is called as gate induced drain leakage current the last one is channel punch through all uh, the charge carriers are expected to travel through the channel but some charge carriers does not take the path of the channel they take directly they don't travel through the channel but they travel through the substrate and this that is called as channel comes through so these are the different kinds of uh, static and dynamic power leakage power dissipation mechanism uh, which can be considered as the introduction of sources of power dissipation. I hope you understood the topic. Thank you.